this is Janice with Needles in Fashion and I'm here to bring you another tutorial. I have been away for a while so my apologies in advance. I'm doing another tutorial today in collaboration with Fabric Mart Fabrics to bring you, big surprise, another jumpsuit. This is actually going to be one of my first pieces in preparation for the fall so I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's go ahead and get into some of the supplies that we'll need to construct this jumpsuit. The first and most important thing you're gonna need is your fabric. Today I'll be using a 100% wool garbazine fabric from Fabric Mark Fabrics. Uh, when you think of wool, you think hot, um, and this is not gonna be a hot jumpsuit, I guarantee you. This fabric has a consistency of about a mid-weight 12 or a one to two ounce denim. So it's very lightweight, um, so you don't have to worry about this being something extremely hot. It will be a, a great transition piece from the spring into the fall. The second thing you're going to need are your patterns. I'll be using McCall 6930 for the bottom. We'll be drafting out the capris to uh, the bottom pants. For the bodice, I'm going to be using Vogue 9103. I'll be using the bodice for A, B, and C. You're going to need two 5-inch zippers. That I've gotten here. You're also going to need a 20 to 22 inch invisible zipper which I have as well. Along with this you're going to need about a yard and a half of fusible uh, featherweight fusible interfacing. We're going to be interfacing the bodice front. We're also going to be interfacing the waistband. So now that we have those supplies out of the way, you know of course you're going to need your standards, your threads, your scissors and all that good stuff you already know about. Let's go ahead and get started with this construction, all right? Okay, we're going to start with the front. On the front, you're going to take your grain line ruler and you're going to mark one inch from the edge. And you're going to mark two inches from the edge of the center front. So we have two inches from the center front and we have one inch from the side seam. I'm going to take this and I'm going to draft this down because I can't locate my curve ruler even though I just got my uh, sewing space together. So I'm just going to draft that down. To match the side seam. And I did that draft down six inches. From the front, I'm going to actually curve in. So I am going here. Because I want to have more of a busty feel. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. But I'm working off an inspiration picture and I want it to have that feel. I'm going to go down the same six inches before I come back to the center front and I'm just going to make sure those align and they do and I'm going to cut those pieces out again we're working with the front piece here you have to keep in mind you have to duplicate that same thing on the back. So I cut that piece off. I'm going to turn this here so I can cut this side here. One inch so I'm going to mark that and you can do that right from the notch if you want to you place that
All right, so now we have a curved edge. Now what I'm going to do is do what I don't want to do and take my rotary edge. I'm just going to grab a ruler that I can cut on. And I'm just going to clean up that curve I have here just to make it very seamless. There we go. And if you look there, I have a nice even curve from the top down to the bottom. And me cutting on my table. All right. So this is only the only adjustments that we're going to do for the front. We got an inch in from the side seam, and then we have two inches from the center front, curving it down, which end up being about seven inches, one inch lower than where you have it for the side seam. So we're going to place that aside. We're going to pull down our back piece. You want to duplicate this because when you put your shoulder seams together, you want it to match. So I'm going to measure two inches from the center back. Make a mark here. I want to draft this into, I'll turn it this way so you can see it. I'm going to draft this into, and this is a very sharp turn here, into the neckline because I don't want my neckline to be super wide in the back. And I'm going to cut that down. And I'm going to take my ruler here, put this on the bottom so I can clean up that line. Make sure that it's straight. You don't have any sharpnesses in it. There we go. So we have a new back. And then from the one inch from the side seam, I'm going to mark that. I'm going to mark down six inches like we did for the, the front piece here. So I know where I need to curve my pattern piece down to. And I'm just going to draft that on down. Again, you can use a curve ruler to do this. I'm kind of doing it the hard way, but it's very simple. Trust me. All right. So I have that draft out. And then I'm going to cut that piece out. Okay, so now we have our front and our back pieces cut. We cut them down the same length. You want to do a real quick fact check on your cutting by turning your fabric to right sides together and just matching it up here at the side seam, as you see here. Uh, is that right? There we go. Um, I have a little bit of uh, fabric here, excuse me, pattern paper here. So I'm just going to come here and scale that around a little bit and cut the little piece off so they both match. So now my, my shoulder seams match, my arm seams match. So we are literally done with the adjustments that we had to make to the front piece. So I'm just going to fold it over and put that aside. I'm going to put my fabric out, we're going to lay it out, and then we're going to start working on adjusting the pants. I got to inform you guys that we need to make an adjustment to the front before we move on to our pants. So, excuse me. I place a piece of scrap paper here under. I'm going to match the center seam edge to this paper and just tape it down. And what I'm going to do is I am going to cut the same curve for the front. To the edge of my paper. When I get here, I'm going to cut straight out. 
I'm going to curve that a little bit. I don't want to take it down any lower, but I'm just going to cut here. There we go. So we have a nice curve. Still, it's very consistent with the curve that we made for the front. And then it goes straight here from the back. This pattern is going to have a very dominant center front after the bust area. So we want to make sure we have that. When we put it on the fabric, we're going to actually extend this fabric a little bit down, but we'll cover that point once we get there. So I just want to include that little piece there. And now we can go ahead and move on to our pants, all right? Okay, and now on to our back piece. As you can see here, because this jumpsuit will not have pockets, I curved up the edge of the pattern paper to the end. It goes out about an inch and a half from the top. Very similar to any pants pattern that you have that does not have pockets. So what I did is, is kind of eliminated the pocket when I cut out the pattern piece. So I'm going to pin this piece. Anytime I do a pants, I always draft it out to about 50 inches because I'm never sure exactly what shoes I want to wear with my jumpsuit or my pants until towards the end. So I'm going to measure down 50 inches. From the top of the pattern, down 50 inches. I'm just going to mark that with a pencil. And I'm going to take my ruler. And I'm going to follow the pattern because the, the pattern piece that I cut out was actually for the capris. I'm just going to follow it down here and just draft it on down to 50. Now 50 is here so I'm going to start at the end here and just kick it out just a little bit so I have my gray line ruler down to the 50 inch mark. I'm just going to kick it out and I'm kicking it out probably about a inch and a half. I'm just going to make a line there. After I do that, I'm going to make my straight line for my 50 inch, 50 inch mark. Connect those two lines. And I'm going to do the same here. Line it with the edge. And I'll line it with the straight edge. As you know, at the end of every fabric, it has a kick out. So we'll line it with the straight edge here. Where the kick out is. And go out about an inch and a half. I don't want a super wide bell bottom, but I just want something sufficient that gives that definition. Okay, so those lines are already connected. What I'm going to do next is just go ahead and cut these pieces out. Keeping my scissor bottom blade on the table so I can make sure I get nice clean lines.
So now that you have your pattern pieces cut out, the next thing you want to do is cut out a two inch waistband, which happens to be the width of my gray line ruler, times the length of your waistband plus two inches. I do two inches because I want to give some room for ease and some room for error. So I do that and then cut it down afterwards. So I cut two pieces of this because we're going to literally sandwich it between the front and the back and we're going to interface just one piece. So I'm going to go ahead and get over to my interfacing of my front and my waistband and then we'll get on to sewing just shortly after that. Okay, so now that we have our two front pieces and our one of our two waistbands in our face, we're going to prepare our front pieces to be attached. Right sides together. I'm going to pin. Take over to the sewing machine. And I'm pinning all the way around, but I'm not going to be sewing all the way around. I'm just going to be sewing the center front of the edge here. So this is the area here we'll be sewing. Okay, so starting with our back pieces, we're going to sew the neckline and we're going to sew the armhole so you have clean edges and you don't have to do the typical hem. So I'm just gonna do just a quarter of an inch all the way around the neckline. And I'm going to sew around the armhole. Quarter of an inch, same thing. One down. One more to go. Neckline, now the armhole. Okay. 
right, so we got our backs done. We move on to the front. Same thing with the other front. So now that you have all your pieces cut together, the next thing you want to do is clip your curves. I'm just going to do this all the way around, making slits about a little less than a quarter of an inch away from each other, all the way around, because we're working with a curve here. You don't want any bulkiness in your fabric. You're going to cut just before your seam line, so you may want to take your time and do this correctly, or you're going to have to do your seam all over again. I'm going to do this for all of my seams, front and back. My half, my half point is that. Fold it in. Put that slit right at the edge of the bodice front. Pin in to keep I'm going to turn your bodice piece inside out. I did the same thing already for all of my other bodice pieces. Make sure you get right down to that seam. And I'll take my bodice back here, which I already have the neck and the arm hole. And you're gonna press it. I'm gonna line up my side seams with the front. And do the other I'm side. going to pin it. I'm not going to pin it through the shoulder pad. I'm just going to pin it on both sides. Do an understitch, but it's not really necessary. You can if you want to, but you're only going to be able to do it on one side because you're enclosing. And you're doing the same folder typically how you would do uh, when you're putting pants together. That way you can have a clean seam and it's not uh, a, a bulky seam. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. Actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 
throw the pad out for now so it doesn't interrupt it. I'm going to sew around that seam. I'll do the same with this one, take it out. Fold over my Hold that over. Match my side seams. And pin. One more here. And I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine. I'm gonna sew this, and then I'm gonna insert our shoulder pads back inside of these pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna insert this seam here into my sewing machine. I'm doing a 5 eighths of an inch seam. I'm going to go all the way around. Open in my seams. already have my other piece done. Now we can go on over to the table, turn these inside out, here, which will be our shoulder seams, and then we'll continue on to the next step. Okay, now that we have our shoulder seams sewn together, as you can see here, it's time to go ahead and insert our our um, shoulder pads. Remember, we did the split in the shoulder in, in the shoulder pad, so we're just going to slide this through. And I have my finger here on the slit; I can actually feel it. And I'm just going to line that up. Remember, that's the flat side. Line it up with my middle seam. Let it lay flat, and I'm going to put a pin in, putting it far away from the shoulder seam because I'm going to literally stitch in the ditch here to reinforce the shoulder pad. Now I've already done that on this side, so as you can see, you cannot see the stitch, and that will be done. So I'm going to take that over to the sewing machine. I'm going to stitch in a ditch and reinforce it. And then the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and serge okay, our Okay, so fast forward just a little bit. We finished off the serging for our bodice pieces. I went ahead and sewed the side seams together on both sides. Left the back open, of course, because we need that for a zipper. And I also sewed the center front seams together at the end of our curve for the front. I also went ahead and did my top stitching. When you're going to do this, you want to do this before you sew your, side, your center seams together. You're going to want to start at your center seam right along your seam. And what I did was made a line here with my, my pins on where exactly my um, shoulder pad stops so I wouldn't get into that area. So as you can see, all of my seams end along that line. So you start here and you just keep going on out from there, quarter inch apart or however far you want your stitches to be apart, and you keep going around until you get to the end of your 
uh, front bodice piece. Now you're going to have a little bit of difficulty, of course, getting over the dart. Um, I did my darts through, I did double uh, darts through the double fabric. To make it a little bit easier, if you want, go ahead and dart your front and your back bodice, uh, bodice pieces before you do this, then they lay a little bit flatter. But this is the way that I did this one. So now I can set my bodice front aside. I went ahead and finished off the edges as well. My pants is already sewn together. It's fairly simple, front and back together, inside, pants laid inside, sew up, and we left the back open. I left the back open eight inches here from the top of the back. So here we have our front, and here is our back. Still need to finish off the top edges of this. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to work on our zipper insertion for the waistband. I have my center of my waistband mark here, and I've started my zipper insertion just one and a half inches from that center point. From there, I created a center line that is four inches long. Now, my zipper is five inches, but I only want it to be four inches uh, on the insertion because I don't want it to be a wide area of coverage. So with that, I have my center line here on both sides, and I marked a quarter of an inch um, stopping points for my sewing on each end. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to fold that in there so I can cut that open. I'm just going to cut that down to about a quarter of an inch from the end. And I'm just going to take this out, being very careful, to the corner on both sides. Now I can do the other side. Okay, next thing I want to do is to fold these sides down. Before I do that, I'm going to take a very small pieces of interfacing that's about a little over an inch long. It doesn't really matter. You want to make sure it's definitely wider than a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to take the triangle portion here because I want to have some control here. Uh, it's a little hard sometimes to stick that piece down. I'm going to place some fusible interfacing over that piece there. I'm just going to press that down. And that just helps with my control. You want to make sure you don't get any interfacing into your opening because it's going to be visible when you turn it to the other side, to the right side. So I'm doing the same thing here. Nice little tip for when you're doing welts. And that's whether it's a welt pocket or if it's a zipper insertion. So I'm just going to fold this down, press that. And press the other side all the way down. Now, I did a quarter of an inch because I actually want some of the gray in this zipper to show. So I'm going to turn this to the right side. I'm going to place my zipper here, right at the stop. And there's two ways you can do this. Typically, I would baste it, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to put some pins in it. to Keep it in place before I take it over to the machine. Bad angle for me, but I need you to be able to see this. I'm 
Oops, I can't place that zip, uh, the pen here. And I'm gonna zip the zipper down so that my pole is right at the opening. Here we go. Hold this side down and pin it. So you have just a small amount of that gray showing. I also went with the silver teeth as well. So we have that first one done, we can move on and go to the second one. And once I sew this in, then I'll cut off the excess of the zipper that's here. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna cut off a couple more pieces of inner casing. Do the same thing, and then we'll go over to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew our zipper in. Like we're, we're in the final stretch now. Zippers. So we'll be right back. Sewn in. Now it's time to go ahead and start attaching this zipper to your pants. I'm going to do this a little bit of the hard way, but this is the way that works well for me. I'm going to start right at that midpoint, match it with my center front. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other waistband once I find it. Here we go. Right sides together. I'm just going to pin this here. And I'm just going to go all the way around. Making sure I get through all three layers of fabrics. Have my darts facing outwards on the front inwards towards the center seam on the back. Your preference is just what I do when I create in my jumpsuits. And here. So again, like I said before, I created my waistband long enough just to count for any errors or easing issues. So it's gonna go over the edge here. I'll cut that off once I'm done and once I start working on my invisible zipper, same thing here, I'm gonna work my way out. Place that dart towards the, uh, the side seam. And on to the outside. All right, so I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. I'm going to sew a, about a third of an inch seam all the way around. I'll come back and then we'll start attaching the bodice to this as well. We'll be doing it a little bit differently, so I'll come right back to that. Okay, now you can see that we have both sides of our waistband sewn to the pants here. We're going to take our bodice and we're going to pin just one layer, let's see, here we go, to the right size of the front of the waistband and just pin all the way around. Now, I'm pretty proportionate, so I don't usually have sizing issues from bodice to Um, you could do a couple things. You can play around with the darts. You can play around with the sizing if you have room um, to get those to scale those down. 
Um, usually you can do you can manage it with the darts, but I can't say otherwise because I haven't had much of an issue. I'm just going to make sure these match here. I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch here this time. And then what we're going to do then is flip over the inside, stitch in the ditch through the front to in order to attach the back waistband. So I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and do that very quickly. And come okay, back. so as you can see, we have our front and, uh, excuse me, our top and our bottom sewn together. I went ahead and did the liberty of, of attaching an exposable zipper as opposed to an invisible zipper to give it more of a clean look. And it's more consistent with the zippers that we have in the front. Okay. I raised my darts two inches in the back to account for some of the shifting changes of the bodice in the back. And you're literally done. That is it. The last thing we're going to do is go ahead and hem this and we're all finished.